Hey everybody, hope you all doing great and thank you for your support to this channel so far. I really appreciate it. I've been uploading lots of exorcism related content on my channel because I feel that spiritual warfare is very real and there are a lot of things that even us Christians don't know about. So anyway, let's get straight to the video. I've gone through I think 10 hours of lectures and podcasts by exorcists such as Father Chad Ripperger, Father Vincent Lampert, Father Carlos Martins to name a few. I'm just going to share a few points that I've gathered for all of you, but please do remember to always look at it from the whole context. So if there are certain information that might confuse you, do check out the full lectures to get the whole picture. I have provided the links of each full lecture in the description box below. So I think sometimes when we put these notions in our minds, if you go out at night, now how many people are going to go home tonight and if you're walking, <laughs> what was that? Was that a squirrel? Did somebody step on a stick? Firstly, the name of certain demons. Now, this is interesting because one of the names of the demons shared by Father Chad Ripperger is the name of a character from movies in the Marvel Universe, Loki. So let me give you an example. The demon Loki. Yeah, it's a real demon. I'm being perfectly honest. I'm not sure how the name is spelled, so I guess I just spell it as L-O-K-I. According to Father Ripperger, this demon whose name is Loki, his original task was to lead people to religious life and to become priest. But now, under Satan, Loki seeks to derail vocation by making men and women to become worldly. There's another demon whose name is Isis and his domain is extreme anger. Extreme anger is the domain of the demon Isis. According to Father Ripperger, this demon Isis's fall is because of his refusal to accept Christ's mercy for men. And as a result of that, he became the most cruel and vicious demon that one has to deal with and to a certain extent, demon Isis is worse than Satan. Now, there's another question that comes to mind when I started to listen to these lectures. How does one get possessed in the first place? I mean, it's a very logical thing to ask, isn't it? Father Carlos Martins has the answer. According to Father Carlos Martins, someone can get possessed through our moral choices. Um, no one right. desires right. to be possessed by the devil. Of course. No one. It happens through the choices we make whereby we're choosing that is at heart perverted and that is contradictory to the will of God. Father Martins also pressed the point that the Western world is now becoming pagan again. The West is abandoning its Christian faith, the faith which builds the Western society. And you know what comes with paganism? Well, you and I can see them in action a lot these days. Necromancy, New Age movement, people trying to talk to the dead or talk to spirits, people thinking that demons don't exist and that these demons are merely fairy tales or myth. Do I believe in life after death? Do I believe in communication with the dead? That's a complicated question and I still am investigating. My name is Mira Patassin and I'm the author of The In-Betweens, The Spiritualists, Mediums, and Legends of Camp Etna. As we're talking about possession in this video, Father Vincent Lampert explains there are two categories of demonic activities. It can be ordinary or extraordinary. Ordinary demonic activity is temptation, something which Father Lampert stresses all of us struggle with on a daily basis. As for extraordinary demonic activities, can be classified into four main categories and there are demonic infestation, demonic vexation, demonic obsession, and demonic possession. So demonic infestation would have to do with the presence of evil uh, in a location or associated with an object. Demonic vexation would be the action by the devil and demons aimed at attacking and harassing humans physically. So vexation would be physical attacks. This would include scrapes or bites or markings on a person's body. The third type of extraordinary demonic activity is demonic obsession. And these are mental attacks against a person, whereby Thoughts of evil are persistent in a person's mind, and even though they try to push them aside, they just keep coming back again and again. So thoughts of evil constantly fill a person's mind. And then we have demonic possession, whereby the devil or some other demon will take control of a person's body, treating that body as if it were its very own. 
There's another point that Father Lampert shared in his lecture as well. The devil apparently can play on our memories and our imagination. So the devil will try to put thoughts into our heads in order to instill fear about something and amplify those fears by playing on our memories and imaginations. Another point raised by Father Vincent Lampert is that demonic possession is not contagious. Father Lampert reminded us that we should never give the devil more credit than he is due. Of course, this type of thing will be great for Hollywood movies, but in reality, demonic possession is not contagious. So I guess this will be the end of this video for now. I'm thinking of making it a series if you guys want more. I would love to do it and discuss with you guys in the comment section. If you guys like this video, I'll probably make a series about it. Please do leave a like and drop your thoughts in the comment section below and tell me what you think. That's all for now. May God bless all of you who's watching this. So I think sometimes when we put these notions in our minds, if you go out at night, now how many people are going to go home tonight and if you're walking, <laughs> what was that? Was that a squirrel? Did somebody step on a stick?